Hello and welcome to the Linux Firewall Crash Course where I will teach you everything you need to know to get started with the Linux NetFilter in less than 30 minutes. NetFilter is a powerful built-in Linux firewall. However, the tricky thing is the configuration and the maintenance. IPTable is a program built to configure the NetFilter firewall. It is a command line interface which means that you have to rely on the Linux terminal program to use IPTable. NetFilter and IPTable provide a foundation for the Linux firewall. If you can configure the NetFilter through the IP table, you should be able to set up any other firewall products out there. If you are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you have learned something new. So in this crash course, you will first learn the basics of Linux firewall and understand the core concepts and the framework of NetFilter like rules, chains and table. Then we will dive into the NetFilter packet flow. I will also show you the brief demonstration of IP table on Ubuntu host machine. Finally, it's a compressor to keep typing IP table commands on CLI so you can automate this process by creating shell script. So we will run a shell script instead of individual commands. So we have a lot to cover here. Let's get started. First of all, the firewall is actually designed to block unauthorized network access. So a built-in Linux firewall consists of two parts. The first part is a framework within the Linux kernel known as NetFilter. The second part is a packet selection system called as IP tables. IP table gives an ability to perform actions on network packets. It is a command line utility essentially consists of series of tables to inspect IP packets in the Linux kernel. Now that we understand what an IP table is, next I will give an overview on the most basic components of IP table to get you started. IP table has a tons of components, but most of the time you are going to be working just a handful of them. To go through this chronologically, NetFilter organizes its ACL or access control list using tables. So I am going to show you the basic structure of IP table. As mentioned earlier, IP table consists of several tables which are predefined and each table consists of several chain. A chain is a string of rules. When a packet is received, IP table find the appropriate table then runs through the chain of rules until it find match. So essentially each chain can contain multiple rules. Each table can contain multiple chains and there are multiple tables as well. As a matter of fact, there are five standard IP tables. They are filter table, the name table, the mangle table and the row table and the security table. The filter table is the most commonly used table among all tables. This is a table where you can block incoming connection or deny outgoing connections. The name table is used for the network address translation. NAT remaps one IP address space to another. NAT can be used to allow single IP address to be shared. For example, if you are running a virtual machine on a private network inside your Linux system, you could use NAT to control the traffic to those virtual machines. The mangle table is used to alter the packets. You can do things like TTL which stand for time to live. The row is rarely used and its primary purpose is to allow exemption from the connection tracking. The security table is used for a mandatory access control network rules and the mandatory access control rules is implemented by Linux security modules. And these are the tables you will be working with and each one has a specific purpose. One thing to point out here is that you can't create your own tables. Next we'll understand how the IP table chain works. Just like there are default tables, there are default chains. And each table comes with a set of those predefined or built-in chains and the five chains are input output forward pre-routing and post-routing you might have noticed all these chains are capitalized just like uh, most of the things in linux chains are case sensitive so if you want to refer the input chain you have to do so using the uppercase letter so there are net filter built-in tables so on your screen it is a depiction of built-in chains used by each table the filter table has an input, forward and output chains. And the net table uses input, output, pre-routing and post-routing. Where Mangle uses all the default 5 chains. The row table consists of output and pre-routing changes. 
and the security table used by input, output and forward chains. Here is another way to represent the same information. The block diagram shows the net filter table made up of input, forward and output chains. Remember that each chain have its own set of rules. But unlike tables and chains, there are no default rules. And unlike tables, you can create your own chains. So this is the way you can create your own collection of rules and customize and configure the net filter firewall. For example, you can create chains called log and drop that logs when the packet is going to get dropped and then actually drops that packets. This way you can keep the audit trail which can be used for the securing your system and used for the troubleshooting. Now we understood the core concept like table, chain and what the rules are. We will put together everything and then learn how the packet flow really works. This is an important concept, let's get into it. So we'll consider all the possible scenarios here. First, we'll look at the traffic destined to the local system. Then we'll look at the Linux firewall acting as a transit. And finally, we'll see how the IP traffic originated from the local system really works. Here are the flow that shows the path of the packet that will take assuming that there is no rules that stop the packet along the way. So it visualizes all the inspection point of a packet goes through when processed by NetFilter. If a packet is inbound to a Linux system, it will go through the period routing change. Then check the routing table and if the packet is destined to the local system, then it goes to the input chains and finally the packet hit to the local system. Let's also consider the case where the packet arrive from a remote and pass through the system and the Linux firewall act as a transit. In that case where the packet inbound to a destined to the another host, it will go through the pre-routing chain, then to the forward and finally to the post-routing before the packet leaves the system. Let's consider the final scenario where the packet that originate from the local system, it will go through the output chain and then post routing before it leaves to the system. In this section I'm going to show you the IP filter execution sequence when the packet is processed. So if we combine the previously explained the chain towards the loader they have used, you will get a complete picture of the path of the packet takes through the system. Since you probably won't be using row, mangle and security table, I have included a simplified diagram of the path. Any packets that comes to the system will start at the top of the diagram. It comes through the network, into the NAT table and through the pre-routing chain. From there, the packet is either destined to the local system or it's going to be forwarded. If it is destined to the local system, then the packet goes through the input chain in the filter table. If the packet originate from the local system, then it will traverse to the NAT and the output chain, followed by the filter output chain. From there, it goes through the NAT post routing chain and finally leave the system. Alright, now we know how the packet flow works. Next, we can start creating rules and placing those in appropriate tables and chains because rules are placed within the specific chain of specific table and each rule has a matching component and the target action component. The matching portion of the rule defines the criteria that packet must meet for the associated action to be executed. You can match a packet in several different ways. You can match by the protocol like TCP, UDP, ICMP and so on. And we can also use a specific source IP address or the source network. Similarly, we can use destination IP and the network source port and destination port or finally we can use interface where the packet comes or goes out like ingress and egress and you can make a simple rules by using just one of those matching criteria or you can make more complex rules combine all the criteria. for example you could match a tcp originated from ip address 1.2.3.4 that are destined for port 80 and if they don't match all three criteria, packet is considered to be un unmatched, then the packet will examine the next rule in the chain. The target section of the rules determine what happens to the packet that is matched. The target can be either the name of the chains or built-in targets. These are the built-in target that are commonly used. And target is an action that gets triggered when the packet meets the matching criteria. I will see more on this on the practical session of IP tables. To summarize, we have covered most of the IP table component. We started with the tables and looked at how the table classifier rules 
according to the type of decision they make. For instance, if the rule deals with network address translation, it will be put into the net table. If the rule is used to decide whether to allow the packet or continue to the destination, probably to be added to the filter table. We also looked at the chains and chains determine when the rules will be evaluated. So just using these core components, you can actually build pretty powerful net filter firewall. We'll see that on our next video. Thanks for your time. See you on the next video.